Okay, before we start anime, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, we've already saved as a planet underscore explode. And we want to make sure we switch to modeler. And go ahead and hit S on the keyboard to save our textured objects. And we'll just switch back to layout. Because you want to make sure, uh, if you're doing a save as, it will save your objects automatically. Or at least ask you if you'd like to save your objects. Because object textures are saved sep separately and objects, any modifications, are saved separately in Modeler than they are in Layout. And we're going to set up our camera now to kind of how we want our shot. Uh, we'll bring up Camera Properties and I really dislike full full screen and I want to have kind of a nice wide screen. So I'm going to change our width to 850 and that's really not anything specific uh, that's just kind of the aspect ratio I want to give us kind of a neat effect here. And we'll go ahead and we're going to bank it just a little. Just uh, hitting Y for rotate, right mouse clicking for our bank, and T to move our camera around. And we'll kind of, we won't center it completely. We'll kind of make it a little bit off to the side here. And we can go ahead and add stars a little bit later uh, towards the end of the scene and go back to our camera view take a look and maybe we'll rotate that down just a little bit more and bring it over and that should be good right there and as far as our lighting uh, let's take a look we'll go ahead and render this so we're going to enable viper and we're going to render a frame see how that looks. And we have that nice definition along here. Uh, we'll go ahead and I'm using control shift right mouse clicked and we're going to select render options. I'm going to turn on ray trace shadows and render that again. Okay. And we might want to change our lighting just a little bit but since we have our object over in this lower right hand corner to balance it we don't want to have our light facing this direction and have the shadow over here because then it'll look a little off and we want to make sure it's lit properly and framing the explosion can be just as important as actually doing it because you want to make sure that everything looks right entirely as a scene composition and this way we have all of our light showing on this left side and that balances out the fact that it's not completely centered because you don't want it exactly centered because that just doesn't look right. As far as a shot, I wouldn't have anything completely centered like this. Uh, not with such an action shot like this. It's good to have a little bit of bank. Okay, and now we can start setting up everything for our object. And we have our object replacement planet main. We're going to pull up our dissolve options for this. And let's just say we want to have 30 frames before the object actually explodes. So we're going to have 30 frames where nothing is happening to the object where it's just kind of sitting there. Um, of course you could just do one frame and then as you're editing of course you could just take that frame and kind of stretch it out. But I'm going to add 30 frames because we just want to do this all in light wave and not have to worry about any post production of it. So I'm going to go ahead and click our object dissolve envelope for our main object. And that's going to pull it up and I have it full screen right now. And maybe I can pull it down just a little here so we can still have our time slider down here and use that as opposed to using this one over here. And we need to have this, of course, at zero. And then once we hit 30 frames, we're going to need to jump that up to 100%. Or maybe we'll swap it out just before at 29. So what we'll do is we're going to create a key at 29 uh, and at 30. So we'll go ahead and create another one in here, and that's at 28. But we'll just change that to 29, make sure our value is 0. And 
using the add key button right here and we're gonna select our little crosshair which is our move right here right? you can hit T to select that and we're gonna select that next frame right there which is 30 and we're gonna change our value to 100 and that way it's dissolved 100 percent at frame 30 and we're pretty much going to be doing the exact opposite type of little graph for all the other ones. Now if you notice here we have this curvature in here and that's normally because it, it, what it's doing is it's blending all of our frames together but we don't want that because what that's going to do is start to reverse our dissolve and we want it to be a very linear key so we're just going to right mouse click on this point right here at 29 and change that to linear and this one can be non-linear that's fine because it's only one frame and it's not really going to make a, a big difference there okay so we have this object not dissolved and then once it gets to frame 30 it will be completely dissolved and we'll have our other object Or our pieces of the planet come into view but we're also going to need to go ahead and change all 30 of those other objects in the graph editor to be dissolved those first 29 or 30 frames just so that our main planet does show up so we're going to pull up our objects panel and we're going to go through one by one and edit each, each individual piece so we'll click under object dissolve, we'll hit the E for the envelope and we're going to create a key make sure we hit the create key button and we just want to hit you can just create two random points in here uh, it doesn't matter exactly where they're at because we could just go in and edit those and we'll change that to 29 and then we'll hit that next one and change that to 30 Okay, but the thing that's going to be different about this one is this time we need to have it start out at 100% and then mark its way down to zero. So we'll change the value of the key at zero to 100% and we'll select the one at 29, we'll change that to 100% and this one's already set to zero where it should be so that's fine and we'll take that key at 29, set that to linear and now we have this object dissolved the first 30 frames or first 29 and then go ahead from between 29 and 30 and dissolve inward and these are all going to set up with that one frame between right here it'll dissolve and kind of cross dissolve each other and everything should look okay that way and we can go ahead and just copy this and go ahead and paste it onto the other ones so we'll just use the down arrow key to select our next one. We'll set the object dissolve and we'll just paste. Right mouse click and hit paste and we can do that throughout every single object. Instead of actually having to go in and create that custom graph for each one of our objects. So we'll just go ahead and change all of our objects. Just paste through all of them. Okay, we now have that graph set up on all of our objects except for the nulls and the planet cut, or sorry, the planet main. and as you can see you can see a little bit of distortion here uh, the texture changing slightly and that's because we got that nice little dissolve real quick cross dissolve between the two objects and if I go ahead and render actually 29 and then switch to 30 and render that and if we switch between the two now you can see the differences uh, I guess it, show, it shows up a lot better now um, 
in this viewport or the way this is set up and you can see just by switching between the two all those little distortions and by doing that object replacement and having all the dissolves set up in the envelopes you can see that our still is going to look fine and then once we start blowing it up that'll all change and we can start blowing up on this side just so we can get rid of that but motion blur will take care of a lot of that as far as when the object is coming apart but that really makes a big difference swapping that out and it really changes the smoothing so you just want to do make sure you do an object replacement and now if you really want to you could do an object replacement for each section as you explode each section of course we have 30 uh, little pieces coming off here so that'd be 30 object replacements and a lot of dissolve envelopes and that's uh, really a lot of work and if you do it just right so it doesn't show up you don't really have to worry about that too much okay uh, now we can start kind of grabbing our nulls and moving them outward assigning our keyframes and our we know our explosion is going to start at 30 and we want to make sure that we set a keyframe at 30 for each one of the nulls or well it doesn't have to be at 30 for every null but at least for the null the first one that we're going to be moving and actually if I'm, I'm just going to take a look at this one right now and we kind of have that side over there exploding and I'll just go through and kind of figure out which one I want to explode first oh, delete that key and delete that key uh, make sure we set this to zero as we're cycling through our nulls and we're just kind of undoing everything and doesn't look like null 3 has anything attached to it so I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the motion options for 3 and the parent item is null 3 so that should be moving with it go ahead turn off viper because we're not going to need that right now yeah and it looks like that our objects are not moving with that ah well the reason for that is we've got our object replacement so we won't be able to see those before so we do need to make sure our time slider is out a little for this and then we'll just have to delete our keys once we're done. Yeah, I think we're going to blow off that first section first for null 3. So I'm going to undo any movement we have and reset that back to 0. And in that case, it didn't create a key. So that's fine. So we're going to move our slider down to 30. And I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard. And I'm going to create a motion key for position, scale, and pretty much everything for selected items. And that's just so that when we bring bring it out, it doesn't start moving at zero, and it starts moving from 30. And we're going to have to edit the graph editor for that to make that a linear key so that it's not sinking in first before it explodes. And since we want to have everything continuously moving, we're going to move our time slider all the way down to the last frame and kind of figure out where this object's going to be at 210 and we just kind of want to move it out just in the perspective view here taking a look and we'll move it out about there so it goes out of frame at 210 so it is out of the frame completely and we'll be focusing on our other animations at that point and now if you go notice here uh, as I'm scrolling through in this case it doesn't really show up too much because we have the, the dissolve and the object plate replacement and the fact that it is exploding at exactly the same time that, that it's replacing itself but if you notice the null here that it's sinking in just as before it shoots out and the fact that we're going to have other pieces of the animation uh, 
not starting at 30 and they'll be starting later, we're going to need to change their graphs. And I'll just go ahead and change this one and we'll be changing the other one as well. But I'll show you this one specifically just and show you exactly why that's happening. So I'm going to pull up the graph editor and if you take a look we have a little bit of curvature in there and that's because none of these are set to linear key. So we just go ahead and right mouse click on all those keyframes at 30 and just set them to linear just for that null and we don't have it rotating at this point but we will have them rotating individually from the cells. So pretty much you just gotta worry about the position and if we look at this null now there's no premature movement from frame 30. Okay and now what we want to have is since we have our separate pieces in here at about the point right here uh, about frame 75 we want to have another piece break off so we'll grab our null or well our th 3 2 and we're gonna have this piece kind of break off from that and I'm gonna create a key at 75 and then move all the way to our last frame. We're going to change this perspective. And we just want to set up and have this kind of rolling off. So we'll go ahead and just move it. And now, right now, as you can see, we have our little bit of premature movement just because the graph editor so we're gonna have to create a linear key at 75 but what we're just gonna have is we'll take a look at the camera view we're just gonna have this object kinda of breaking off and we'll go ahead and change that graph right now so we can see it a little bit better so pull up the graph editor again and this time we're gonna change position and rotation because it doesn't really start moving until then and in this case we're not going to be able to change or copy this graph and paste it on any of the other ones so we are going to have to create about 30 graphs for each one of the objects as you can see that's not exactly a great movement there so what we're going to want to do is maybe move it out over here and you just pretty much want to make and see what looks natural of course we don't want to decelerate too much Okay. rotation and since we've already set the graph to linear for all the ro for that rotation key we don't have to worry about going back in there but I can use the scroll button if you have one to scroll down to rotate or you can hit Y on the keyboard for rotate and we're just gonna move that around a little and what we're pretty much gonna have is just a secondary explosion in here kind of splitting off that piece once we get to it and I also want to have the other pieces exploding at the same time which is going to be at 75 so I'll go ahead and grab planet 3 3 and at 75 we're gonna create a keyframe and select move and go ahead and do the same thing and move that over and this piece kinda breaks off the bottom here and we need to edit our graph for that because we have a little bit of premature movement so pull up our graph editor again and we're going to set to linear back on all positions and all rotations and you can't really see any rotate 
anything in the rotate right now because we haven't rotated it all but we're still setting it up so that now when we do rotate right now we don't have to go back and change it so I'll go ahead and select the rotate on that okay and 3 4 we're gonna do the same thing set a key at 75 and then move all the way down to 210 make sure we have move on and we're gonna grab that it just, just looks like a little piece right there and we're just gonna have that kinda fly off a lot farther than the rest and we'll take a look in the camera view yeah we'll just have that little piece kinda shoot off and you'll be able to, barely be able to see it but it should look alright and we'll change our rotation because we're going to have that flying out and kind of rotating in all different directions just because it is such a small piece it'll be affected a lot more you know, make sure we add a little bit of bank to it too and now we need to go into the graph editor for that and go ahead and change those all to linear on that key of 75 see now that we had the rotation in this one you can see there was a change and now if you also notice if there was to be an explosion uh, especially as it looks right now all the bottom pieces seem to be breaking off we're gonna have a little bit of change in this other object too so at 75 we want to create a key for this one as well and go ahead and move this one up just a little and add it rotating kind of backward and maybe we'll move it up a little bit more and we'll change the trajectory a little bit we'll take a look in the camera view and see how that looks make sure everything's in view okay we're gonna add a little bit of rotation to that once we get to that last frame a little bit more we're having it tilt back but I want it to go just a little bit more so we can really show kind of the impact of that secondary explosion within that object And now this is kind of slow moving, uh, but during this time period where all this is happening, we're going to have lots more explosions happening in here, and it's just going to all be kind of at once within these seven or so seconds. And that's just going to add so much more than if we were to just blow up each little section individually. If we have them all going off at once and all these tiny little explosions here and there, it's going to look real realistic. And you put a lot of work into it this way, but the final effect is going to be really quite fantastic looking. Alright, so now we need to change the graph for this object now that we've set rotation and movement on it. I'll go ahead and change these all to linear. And then we're going to move on to the next section, the next piece that we're going to be blowing up. And we kind of want to figure out now exactly where we want that secondary piece blowing up. And we could also have uh, another side of it kind of blowing up at the same time as this one. But for right now, we're going to leave it. And let's select null 4. And we'll take a look okay and that seems to be those back ones so undo and I'm going to delete that key and that's going to be our second explosion and we're going to have that happen in about right 
at 60. We want that to start coming off. And if you notice too, right here, this main object, we do have, it's kind of, just kind of shooting out real straight. And we could, if we want, take a look at our null and maybe add a little bit of rotation onto that. Just take a look and see what happens if we do that, just so it's not so plain. Once it starts moving, and that does make it look a little bit better. So we'll go into the graph editor that null, and we'll change our rotation on here, yeah, which we already. Oh, there we go. And set all those to linear key. And that's just so it's not shooting out directly without any movement whatsoever. And that looks a lot nicer. And on this next second explosion, we won't have so much time between the secondary explosion. So we're going to grab the fourth one, the fourth null, and blow up that back section, which we said we're going to do. Actually, we'll do it about, we'll start it at 50. Or may actually, yeah, we'll do a 60, just so we have a little more time in between those two. So we have our key set at 60. And we'll go to 210 and remove, and just go to our perspective view. Take a look at that null. And we just want to make sure it's kind of shooting off in the correct direction that it would. And because this is a the second explosion, I want to have this off camera. And the earlier ones, I, I just want to be off camera by the time the other ones are finished. And that's so we have constantly have stuff moving off camera throughout the animation and not just everything staying in the scene because we're also going to be adding dynamics and hypervoxels to the ends of each or to each one of these pieces creating sort of a flame fireball effect for each one of the little pieces so we got to keep that in mind too that we're going to be having these little trails uh, this one trail will probably be out to here so once it's right here it'll be just coming off the screen not completely but almost Okay, just kind of a, taking a look at the motion here, and we're going to want our secondary explosion for this one to happen, mm, I'd say about at 78, so real close to the other one, just so it's starting to come out a little, and then it'll explode again. And if you take a look now, too, we have it sinking in, like a and you can kind of tell now uh, of course we have the object replacement before 30 and then it switches so that's why we need to change the graph on the other one uh, just so we can show you that how it's going to affect every single object is going to do that that's not being exploded after frame 30 and we're going to pull up our graph editor for that we'll go ahead and make a linear key and now we should no longer have to worry about that premature action and of course if you wanted a little bit of an implosion before the explosion you could of course leave that in there or even use a, a, a spline on there to adjust exactly how much you're gonna have the implosion be but we're gonna leave it the way it is as a linear And like I said, we're going to blow this up about 78. So now we need to start worrying about 
where the other objects are going to go. So at 78, we're going to create a key. Actually, we won't, we won't need one for the null. Because if we do have any rotation, it'll be at the last frame. We're going to go ahead and select 4, 2. And we're going to worry about that main object later. And I'm going to set this to our camera view. I'm going to create a, cre create a key at 78. And we're going to move all the way out to 210. And then just move that off. And of course, rotate that. And these secondary explosions won't be as large as the initial explosions because we're going to be using a lot of volumetric lighting for that and we just don't want to drown out everything in a huge flare of light. And this one will keep in the scene going off the whole time. Maybe we'll bring it out a little bit farther. That's a little bit too much. Okay. And we'll edit the graph. Setting it to linear. And making sure we change our rotations. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and continue doing this throughout the entire object up until we have our finished explosion. And we're just going to go ahead doing the same thing that we're doing over and over to our other objects using our nulls and rotating making our other explosions. And make sure we're changing our graph editor. and having our nulls in the correct positions and that we have our explosions timed at different times, summed together and we'll just go ahead and finish that up.